Hello everyone, Dr. Zia Tahir here. This video tutorial is 2D overhang frame analysis in Abacus workbench. Statement is the overhang frame shown in the figure is made of steel, modulus of elasticity 30 into 10 to the power 6 psi, Poisson's ratio 0.3. The cross sectional area and second moment of areas for two members are 7.65 inch square and 2.04 inch raised per four, respectively. So, for both of the members, so area and modulus of elasticity are given. Based on that area and elasticity, so the members have a depth of 17.88 inch and a breadth of 0.42 inch. So, for that one, it is a uh, assuming a square cross section and if that square cross section is assumed for that so is some unrealistic depth and breadth will come and the frame is fixed at both supports here and there is a udl 800 pound per foot acting on top there so required is support reactions so on both Ports which are fixed and deformation of the frame under given loading. So, this is example 4.5 from chapter 3 axial member beams and frames of the book Finite Element Analysis Theory and Application with ANSYS. So, here, so that is example 4.5, and this is just I have modified it a little bit. And these are the dimensions. It is from chapter 4, axial member, beams, and frame of the book, finite element analysis, theory, and application with ANSYS. So the results of a uh, ANSYS workbench you shall get. So here, this book uses ANSYS mechanical APDL. So I'll compare the results of ANSYS workbench with the results of ANSYS mechanical APDL which are in this work. So this tutorial is a series of uh, Abacus ANSYS workbench structural analysis. So here uh, on the playlist in my channel, you can find some videos on truss analysis, 2D truss and 3D truss analysis, and then some videos on 2D beam analysis. So steps for analysis of that frame in ANSYS workbench. So these are steps. So I'll follow these steps and then I'll explain that one by one each step. And uh, these are like first is a project, then engineering data geometry model, five is setup, six is solution, then solve, and seven is result. And I'll explain all those. So the first step is to start a static structural project in ANSYS workbench. So that is the ANSYS workbench. And here you have analysis system. Then in that analysis system, that is static structural. So I double click on that. So it will start a new project, static structural. And these are the steps, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven steps, which I'll follow for that analysis. So you need to save that uh, project before starting. Next step is in engineering data, need to add material. And for that linear elastic isotropic elasticity that is required. So here on the engineering data, double click on that. And here you have some default is a structured steel. And then from engineering data source, you can get some other one. So, so I'm going to add a new material here, steel. And so steel, and then from linear elastic isotropic elasticity is being dragged here, and the value of Young's modulus in psi, so that is psi, and then 30 e raised per six, and the Poisson's ratio is 0.3, so that a new material steel is being created. So you can save it, or otherwise it automatically saved in the project. So once saved, you can simply close it. So next step in the geometry, you need to select analysis type and basic geometry option. I'm going to select that line bodies and analysis as 3D. So for that, click on geometry and in the view, go to properties. So here you will find properties. So 
click on line bodies and then after that the next one is need to uh, sketch that frame in design modeler and for that one need right click so you have two option one is a space frame geometry and the other one is design modeler so i'm going to start design modeler so it will take some time to open that design modeler so that is design modeler so in that design modeler the steps which we need to follow first we need to sketch that so sketch is a simple straightforward one horizontal element and one vertical element and i'm going to draw that in xy plane so first select xy plane and then you'll have that xy plane and in the sketching here in the setting grid snap on and then but before uh, grid on and snap on but before that you need to change units to feet because here like horizontal member is 10 feet and vertical member is 9 feet so units in feet and then major grid spacing i'm going to select as 5 feet and then minor step per major i'm going to select that five so now uh, now from here i'll select line so the total height of that is ten, nine feet so i'm going to start from here from nine feet and then hit that is the second one so i draw that there one horizontal member and one vertical member so i can check their dimension so if the dimensions are not appropriate you can change that dimensions like that so here height is 10 so you by clicking there you can by adding that value here you can change the dimension so now that here so in the xy plane i got that sketch so now uh, in the concept line from sketches and generate so by clicking here concept lines from sketches apply and then generate and you can see here is a line body is being a line line body is being created but it doesn't have that cross section so for that cross section the next one in the concept cross section rectangular and then generate it so for that one here in the concept go to cross section rectangular and then it is dimension in feet but i don't want that one i need to change the units and i'll put that inches so in the inches so the breadth of the member is 0.428 and then the depth of the member as 17.888 so that one it looks very weird like uh, because the usual they are not like that uh, thin so it has area of cross section as 7. Point, uh, area of cross section as 7.5 and then modulus of elasticity as 2.4 so that uh, cross section is being created so i am going to rename that rectangular and then i am going to generate that one so now here you can see that cross section is generated so now the next one is uh, click on the line body and assign cross section and then generate it so here is the line body so just assign that that cross section to that so rectangular and then here so now that line body uh, that section is assigned to that so now i can go to view and then i can see that what is the cross section so now in 3d you can see that is the cross section but this cross section uh, because the load is applied uh, in the vertical direction so its stronger side is not in the direction of vertical it is along z axis so need to change orientation of that both of the members so for that one to change orientation select body as edge and rotate it along that angle and here i am using that 90 angle so it's very simple just click to the edges and select that body as the edge so it is selected and then here so it uh, you already selected that and then here uh, like you can select the plane okay and then here the angle i'm going to rotate that so this is the, its orientation and i'm going to change that towards up or down but here i'm going to change it to 
up so now you can see that its orientation is going upward and for that one now i'm going to select that and then i'm going to change its orientation so now that is uh, that is the frame and like its stronger side of that uh, section is towards that loading so now uh, this modeling in the geometry design modeler all steps are done so i'm going to save it now so it's saved now i'm going to close it the next step is the model which is the fourth one in the project and here is the model so now i'm going to double click on that model and it will take some time it says that starting mechanical sensor mechanical is going to start and it will take some time to start so that is sensor mechanical so first step you need to do is here in this one you need to change the units and i'm going to keep the units as in inch pound i'm going to use that or you can uh, inch uh, foot pound or inch pound so let's say i'm going for inch pound and that is a simple number here so uh, in that the first step is like in the model then the first step is to go to geometry and assign material so here in the geometry also there is a click on the geometry so just click on that and then assign that material which we have steel i have created that so that material is assigned next step in the model create mesh and element size needs to define and for that is very simple that click on the mesh and then element size i'm going to keep here as 12 inch so this element size uh, by changing that element size the accuracy is going to change so i'm going to with one fit size i am going to generate that one and then you can see that here the meshing so the mesh is being of the nodes you can see here nodes and in the display option you can go here in the preference and if you click on element numbers and then you can see node and element number both so meshing is done so the next one uh, need to create a path in the construction geometry and the path type is edge and select body as edges so here uh, in the model in the model construction geometry create a path and it says two point i'm not going for two point i'm going for edge and then you need to here select edge and with the box selection so select both of those edges so in the geometry applied so now uh, now so now like here is two and here is one so if you want to flip that so just right click here and flip path orientation so you'll get here one and here two so it doesn't make any difference so where you want to keep one or two so uh, by default it selected that two here and one here but i can flip the orientation so that is one and two so this way you can change the uh, orientation of that path next step is you need to go to setup and in the static structural go to environment select support as fixed and then scoping method geometry and vertex and that fifth step is like here that is in the same window here so that is i'm going to static structural environment and then i'm going to select that sports fixed so that is a fixed support i am going to select that as left support so it says that scoping method I'll go here, select vertex, and with the box select, so that is selected. So apply. Okay, so that fixed port is being selected. So now I can right click on that and insert. And from here, I can insert the fixed port. And for that one, here is I'm going to apply and I'm going to name that fixed port as right. So now both sports they are being selected next step in the environment so in the static structure go to environment then loads and in load select line pressure so uh, uniformly distributed load in a backus workbench the name of our that is line pressure and then go to components scoping method in the geometry need to select edge so for that one here 
so static structural and you have loads here so just click on there and you'll have that line pressure so for that line pressure is matrix selection and by default its edge is being selected and with the box selection here so that edge is selected apply and then in the defined by its components so we have only in the downward vertical direction that udl udl is 800 pound per foot so for that one it is pound per inch so you can change here units so so that is foot so now you can get that uh, that is minus 800 so that is minus 800 foot per pound so that is minus 800 foot per pound and you can see that so now that line pressure and i am just saying it as udl so it is being applied there the next one the solution need to add force reaction and for that prop force reaction and then boundary condition and then support name so it's simple here you click on the solution and then the probe here you have force reaction and that force reaction it's say force reaction left so i am going to rename that as force reaction at left and similarly in the probe again so force reaction and here force reaction right so i'm going to rename that as force reaction so at fixed port there are like some force reactions and moment reactions and the other one in the probe need to go moment reaction and then apply that so then again for the probe here we have moment reaction so for left support so i am going to rename that as left support and then in the probe then again moment reaction and this time i am going to select that right support so moment reaction uh, so that is right support so now like the reactions so they are being so the next step is need to go for directional deformation so deformation directional for that one is scoping method is geometry or path and orientation named axis so for this one because uh, there's no load applied in y direction z direction so i'm going to request that only deformation in x and y so deformation directional deformation and that directional deformation let's say about x so about x here is a geometry selection so you can select that all bodies but uh, or you can go for so first let's say i'm going for path and path already created and then that is x axis so that is a directional deformation then again in the deformation you click on directional deformation and then directional deformation y and for geometry selection you can select that all bodies but i'm going for here path and then click on the path and then y axis okay so these are uh, directional information about that path okay so now the same one i can go for directional deformation i can add two directional deformation that directional deformation for that all bodies in x direction are in y direction so similarly you can go for directional deformation for some no named selection you can select some uh, nodes for that and then you can get that directional deformation about any nodes so directional deformation along x-axis all bodies so that is x-axis and that is now for all bodies y-axis so now whatever is required in the solution so that is being added so once the parameter required they are added in the solution the next one is you need to solve and for that one is very simple just click here solve and then you can use solve so those yellow uh, icons they uh, symbols they will convert to green and then you will have their green ticks like or otherwise you can hit that solve button so now you'll have all those solutions here so the next one in the results you need to check that reaction that supports and for that one here you have force reaction at left support so i'll see that the value of it and then force reaction on right support so so there are two components of that and then moment reaction there and then moment reaction there 
So here you have that uh, the same one example 4.5. So in this book, it is solved using uh, NCS mechanical APDL, but the results which they got here, so we can compare those results. So now in that solution, so that are F, X, X, Y, and F, Z, but the units they have used as uh, pound inch. So I'm going to change the units as pound inch. So now the force reaction at left sport. So it is 526 in X direction and 4510 in Y direction. So here you can see 534, 4517. So they are slightly different and the difference is maybe the mesh element size or that approximated value of maybe there is a like the cross section i have assumed that as a, a rectangular cross section so probably they use a different cross section and then you can see that at a node 3 which is the uh, which is that left support so fx is minus 534 and fy is 3483 so if i go on to the right support so here you can see minus 5 uh, 526.9 and 3489 so these values are nearly close and then the moment reaction at left support at left support so that in x direction that is a proxy uh, that is zero that y is zero and then it is uh, like as that is 100.32 uh, kilo pound inch so here you can see that it is somewhere 10147 in front of as well. 0 0.101 so that is about 101 kilo pound per inch and then on the node 3 it is 18 uh, 18.18259 so on that other support i can see that it is somewhere 17878 and this one there is slightly difference is again due to like there is a possibility of number of nodes or then about uh, possibly due to the cross section so the results here in Abacus NCIS mechanical, uh, mechanic, uh, NCIS workbench, they are quite close to the NCIS mechanical APDL. The next one is directional deformation. And for that directional deformation, that is the overall deformation here. So you have the minimum value and the maximum value in X direction, and that is in the Y direction. So you can click here. To get that maximum and minimum value for both of those and these maximum and minimum values are there and so then uh, that deformation along the path so here you have the deformation about the path and then uh, here because that path is being going to start from there and then at 10 you will have that uh, like if i change the units to so like as at 120 somewhere, so at somewhere here, so that is in the solution, the, uh, so that is like 2.75 into 10 to the power minus 4 inches, so that is the value. So in that uh, book, so the node 1, node 2 and node 3, so in the book, so they actually selected node 1 here, node 2 here and node 3 there, like at the node 1 at the fixed port left fixed port and node 3 at the right fixed port so that is at 3 so at 3 so they got like uh, ux as ux as uh, like you can see minus 2794 into 10 to the power minus 3 and uh, 2794 and the same value i got here somewhere around uh, 2753 so and then along that path along y-axis and at the same point it is minus 1.6407 that is the y value and in the book so that is like here you can see 0.16392 into 10 to the power minus 2 so uh, these values like they are quite similar to the book so then you can actually it is along that path so you can plot that one and if you want deformation like if you want to get that uh, because here it only shows maximum and minimum and if you want to get that at each node and element so you can just simply export that export that text file as a text file so that is a directional deformation you can see that 
so that file is being exported and then for each node the corresponding value in inches you can see it so this is all about uh, this is all about like analysis of overhang frame to for reaction at support and directional deformation so if you want to get other parameters and how to get that other parameters so you can watch that uh, this one video so lecture one in the lecture one i have like uh, if you want to uh, draw shear force diagram bending moment diagram and all other factors so in these videos i have explained that how to get all other parameters from a particular analysis now the summary of that so for this frame which is subjected to udl fixed at uh, both ends so fixed and support reaction and deformation of the frame was required and for that one in the step i started a static structural project then i did a material in engineering data and then in a geometry i sketched uh, that frame and these are the steps for that so sketch line from sketch and weight then multiply a cross section then line body assign that cross section and then need to change the orientation of the uh, section then in the model need to select the geometry in the geometry assign material then mesh i use that uh, one feet element size to generate that mesh and then in the construction geometry next need to create path and that path will help to find out deflection along that hole of uh, or to visualize that along that uh, frame length and then need to apply a boundary condition in the static structural and here the both boundary condition are fixed and then applied udl as a line pressure and then the solution uh, force reaction moment reaction and then directional deformation were added in the solution and then uh, solved so all that is being solved and then in the results then reaction that's what you can find and then directional deformation you can find i hope that uh, you find this uh, video helpful so thank you very much for watching you can leave your comments for feedback and you can subscribe my channel for more videos on ansys abacus and matlab